Hey everybody, today I'm going to be talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly uh, when it comes to realtors. So stay tuned. Hey, hi everybody. My name is Jim Cagle. My friends call me Jimmy, and I'm a realtor right here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I'm with the Soul by Jimmy group. We're helping people that are relocating to the Grand Rapids area from all over the country, and we love doing it. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and then also go ahead and tap that bell so you get notified of any new videos coming up. Thanks. If you're even thinking about relocating to Grand Rapids, give me a call, a text, an email, even set up a smoke signal. However's best for you, we're here day and night, and we have your back when you're relocating to Grand Rapids, Michigan. You know, I'm a positive person, so it's kind of difficult for me to talk about negative things. Um, but uh, I know there's a lot of questions out there and there's some truth about some of the things that people think about realtors and there's also a lot of falsehoods. And I think I have a unique perspective seeing that as I'm one of the people that used to, I hate you, I don't like to use the word hate, <laughs> I just almost said it, um, but I used to hate realtors. I was a builder and real estate developer before the 2008 crash. Um, and uh, what I would do is I'd use my construction abilities to go in and out with people that had enough money and we would do apartment strip centers and all those kind of things. So from a young age, I was pretty successful. I didn't come from any money and that all went great. Um, but the, one of the biggest things that frustrated me was I'm taking the risk, I'm spending all this time, money, and I would build the project. Let's say it's a house in Lake Michigan. And then I'd have to hire a realtor and give them 6% of my hard-earned money when we're making maybe 20, but we're, we're doing all this risk and it's taking forever. And that's how I thought about it. And um, I, I, I really couldn't stand them. I didn't think they were doing any work. I didn't think uh, they deserved the money that they were getting. And fast forward, um, you know, 10 years from, from uh, then, and uh, now it's 2020, well, 12 years actually, and my attitudes have changed. So I just I tried doing some other startups after that, decided I didn't want to go back to building. I just didn't have the stomach for it after getting crushed like that. And uh, I came into real estate. And one of the only reasons I thought about not being a realtor is because there is such a bad reputation about realtors. And some of that reputation is justified. Um, there are some unscrupulous uh, realtors that don't care about anybody but themselves and they will uh, just looking to make money. And, uh, and but let's be fair, that's in every uh, business, every kind of job, there's good and bad people in every kind of profession. Um, but I, want, I thought we'd give some of, the, some of the things that I've learned from what I thought they were um, to how they really are, and then some of the things I still don't agree with the industry. And so I like to get rid of the bad stuff first so I can end with all the good to keep that more positive tone. One of the things that I think is bad, barrier to entry is so easy to get into real estate. And what that means is um, anybody can take a, like a week long course and you can become a realtor. There's no huge outlay of expenses. I mean, when I was doing these building projects, I mean, you had, I had to become a builder, which was more difficult. Um, but then you had to prove to people with big money that, hey, you could pull this project off, you can make it happen. And that's a lot bigger, that's a, that's a big deal. And you have to prove to people that you can do that and work with architects and all these different people. Well, to be a realtor, it's literally just passing a course and then you can go with a broker and good brokers like where I'm at, 616 Realty, um, they only take on people that are professional, that are gonna do a good job, have ethics and morals. But a lot of brokers will just take whoever comes in and uh, get what they can get from it. And so that's one of the biggest problems is the barrier to entry. I, I think I wish it was a harder to get into, even more expensive, in addition to more classes that having to be taken uh, to become one. So that's one of it. So you just let too many people in. Secondly, um, people have the misconception of uh, thinking, okay, yeah, you put your house, you put your stake in the ground and you get a house and oh my God, you can make 9,000. And that is a lot of money. And I can see if I was a homeowner, wow, these guys were only here for a week and they made $9,000. Um, it's all the stuff that backs that up, but I'm talking about that later. Another one is that realtors don't work hard. Um, and there are, there's a ton of uh, people that work, you know, 10, 15 hours a, a week, and they can make enough to survive. I can tell you, again, I'll get more into it later, anybody who's making a lot of money is working a lot, is working very hard and working very long hours. 
But again, that's one of the things I get that people are talking about. You know, another bad, or I would say this one's kind of ugly, um, is there are a lot of realtors that don't know what they're talking about. There's many that have no clue. How are you talking to somebody about their biggest asset, usually their biggest asset, and what could impact the whole financial future of their family, and you don't know anything about houses or construction or you know what, what's the pricing of this area or this neighborhood. And that's very common, and that's, that's another big problem. Um, another uh, ugly um, slash uh, bad is misrepresentation. People claiming to be one thing, and they're really not. And they're just, they're, they'll say anything and be exaggeratory to the point of lying. Is, that, is exaggeratory a word? <laughs> uh, sorry. But, uh, you know, they'll exaggerate to the point where um, it is a lie and they'll do anything they can to get a listing or a buyer. And that's not right. And that's in any, in, again, in any industry that can happen. Um, so, and there's way more good than bad. And I can't, I'm itching to get to the good because I feel really guilty right now. But again, coming from the outside in of a guy that never liked builders, you don't realize the work that goes into it and what really happens. And that's why I wanted to make this video is, yeah, there are some problems. It's too easy to get into it. There are too many realtors out there. When the economy gets good, every knucklehead in the world wants to become a realtor because they think they can make huge money and they see how much work it is and they get out. So that's another one. Another uh, ugly one is there are so many realtors that um, are doing a part-time and don't know what they're doing. They make it look bad for everybody. They take the standard of the industry and lower it so much because of their unprofessionalism. As a full-time realtor, and I work with people all the time where they don't know what they're doing, and you end up doing it both sides of the transaction pretty much, even when you're getting paid half the money because they thought they were a stay-at-home dad for 10 years, and now all of a sudden they're going to be you know, making 100000 in two months. It's just not the way it is, okay? So that's another one. Um, I'm you know, another part of the bad and ugly is, you know, realtors that will purposely t tell a seller that their listing can go really high. And they'll say, oh yeah, I think it's your house sold at this really high number, even though there's no basis of fact, and it's a wishful number on the seller side, which in my, in my opinion, that's, you're not helping a seller out, you're giving them in fancy land. So what they do is they get the listing, it doesn't sell, it doesn't sell, then they go to the seller and say, hey, look it, we tried, but now we gotta get that number down because we're not selling it. All while knowing that really that number was too high. And that's not right, again, that's just terrible service. So there are people that do that. And again, not to be repetitive, there's people, bad people in every industry. But I know people have that theory out there. Um, another one is that every realtor is rich. Every realtor is making tons of money. Uh, I'll give you some facts on that. About 8% um, of the realtors make 90% of the money. So 8% of the realtors make 90% of all the money in real estate. So it's only the top people that are really making a lot of money. The bottom people, I mean, I know several people that are full-time realtors and they would make more at McDonald's per hour for how often they're working. Um, because some of them do work hard, they're just, they're just not good at the craft. I mean, it's like anything, you have to spend time. And being a realtor, I know I'm kind of going all over the place, but one of the things about it is, it, it's not rocket science, like a lot of businesses aren't, but there are so many moving parts and you have to keep it going. You have to prospect, you have to get new leads coming in. And then once that happens, then you get all this business and you have closings and um, uh, inspections and all these different things happening. And then all of a sudden you stop um, doing your lead generation and the business goes down. So you have, to be to you have to be able to maintain a lot of different things, a lot of different moving parts to be a good realtor. So, you know, another area um, that I think realtors shouldn't be involved in, I would never do it, um, are realtors that will they'll go after people that are um, that they're getting ready for get foreclosed on. Now, if they're legitimately trying to help them, that's fine. Say, hey, we'll help you sell a house so you can get out of it. Like I've done that. I had I had a friend of mine that got in financial trouble. He was going to lose his house, and he had about twenty thousand equity into it. I'm like, let's sell your house, and you can pay pay the commission and still keep that twenty thousand. Not have to go in foreclosure, not ruin your credit. And then when things pick up a little bit in your life, you can take that $20,000 down, we'll, we'll buy another house. That's a, that's a great scenario, and that's helping people out, and I have no problem with that. But some realtors, which again, these aren't the good ones, will uh, go to someone and say, hey, you're, you're getting ready to get foreclosed on. Um, I'll, help you, I'll help you either sell your house, or what I'd rather do is I'll buy it from you because I'm just trying to help you out. And then what happens is, let's say your house is worth $100,000, 100, let's say for easy numbers, your house is worth $100,000. And 
and you only owe the bank like ten thousand dollars that you're getting foreclosed on so the realtor will come in and say hey i'll buy your house from you and you're super excited because you're not going to get foreclosed on they'll give you like ten thousand cash and this and the seller thinks everything is great but the reality is now that realtor owns that house that cost them you know twenty thousand dollars will tend to pay off the bank tend to pay off the realtor and now he has got 80,000 equity. He turns around and flips it, maybe fixes it up a little bit and makes huge money. Well, I don't know how you can say that serves the seller. And there's some of that going on too, which really isn't fair. And that gives realtors a bad name. And again, I would never do that. No one here at 616 Realty would do that. Good realtors don't do that. So enough with the bad and the ugly. Let's talk about the positive. So when I came into this, thinking all realtors you know, didn't work hard, boy, was I wrong. If you, Number one, starting off in real estate, if you're not working 75 to 80 hours a week consistently for the first couple of years, you are not gonna make it. Unless you, unless you came from a business where you, like a, a police officer or something, where you know so many people that you can get enough business to make it, you need to work super hard because you don't have any of that referral business. Your business is all new business. And it's tough to get people out there. And, and this whole time, while you're trying to get new business as a new realtor, you're paying, you're paying broker fees, you're paying the state a fee, you're paying for your MLS, you're paying five, six hundred dollars a month just to hang your license, and that doesn't include any money that you spend for advertising. Okay, so it's really difficult. And some more facts, um, eight, eight out of 10 realtors hang up or are out of the business in three years because it's so difficult. So it's a really tough business to get involved with. Um, so it's a lot more work than what people think. And then once you're in it, what people don't realize is, yeah, sometimes you can get a listing and it's easy. You sell the house right away and that's it. That is, you know, I don't want to call it easy money. Um, you did your job, but it wasn't super difficult. But what that makes up for is the 15 other transactions that you had that you worked 30, 40 hours on and they never went through and you spent money on it and you didn't get paid because that's how real estate is. So it's you can make really good money, but it's a give and a take and you have to be very good at what you do to make that kind of money. If that makes all sense. So. Um, some more good, or some more, rea I, I should say good, but just the realities of it. Um, there are many people, like myself and a lot of people at 616, that generally care about the other person. That you are looking out for their best interest, and you want the best for them. You're going to tell them the right price. You're going to tell them, hey, you know, um, you know, maybe if you fix up your house a little bit, you spend $2,000 to fix it up, maybe we can get $10,000 more out of it. And some realtors, myself included, I'll even pay for some of that to help you out. I mean, I expect to get paid back when we close, but if I think you can make a lot of money by fixing up a couple bathrooms and you know repainting and you don't have the cash, okay, myself and others, we'll pay, we'll pay for that up front and say at the closing, um, we get paid back. We don't make a profit on it, we just get paid back and that's gonna help you out. So you know, again, that's a great service to, real, to, to sellers and buyers. And myself, I love working with listings, I love doing listings, but if I'm honest, I, I like working with buyers even more. Because when you work with a buyer, it's more relationship. You get to know them. You've been working with them for a while. A listing can be, you know, put the, put the meet with them. You put it in there. It's more transactional. You don't really get to talk as much. Where a buyer, you're, you're driving with them. You're looking at different houses. And you get to know them a little bit better. And I enjoy that. Because I want to serve people as much as I can. Um, so more good about realtors. And just what's really real about it is it is way more expensive than what people think. The broker takes a big piece. Um, advertising takes a big piece. I can tell you right now, just me sitting here, and I'm not a huge big shot realtor, I'm moving up the chain very quickly, and I, I hope to be in the top 3% within a year or so, and I will be actually. Um, but for me, between advertising and everything, I'm twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300 a month right now. And I'm in COVID-19 right now, that's why I, I should have said something earlier. I know I look like a hippie, I don't know if that term is used anymore, but I have super long hair and my hair is thick, so it's out of control. And my head's pretty good size, so I don't need all this long hair making my head look bigger. So normally I do look better, <laughs> but uh, just thought I had to point that out there. But it's during COVID-19, which is a terrible thing. I hope people are staying safe. Um, but still during that time, things have slowed down. And in our state, the, we couldn't even show real estate for a couple months because the governor, um, and we had to... Uh, I still had to keep that money going and still paying that money. So it's a lot more expensive than what people think. Again, many realtors really do care. You have to do the work to find a good realtor and that really knows the area. 
And I think having a construction background, obviously I'm biased, I think it's huge. Because I can tell you when you look at a house, okay, that roof, that's, there's a serious problem there. It's sagging, the trusses need to be fixed, or at least scissored up. You know, there's something we need to do uh, to take care of that. Or the foundation, if you see a crack that's getting thicker and thicker, you can see it over years. Okay, well that foundation's got some settling issues majorly. And those are big ticket items and you just wanna walk away from the property. So there's all that going on. Um, I guess in closing, um, I think uh, realtors uh, do do a good job. There's more good than they are bad. And it's a difficult industry and there's so much work behind the scenes that people don't see. When you're doing the comps, when you're doing the paperwork, when you're um, getting with inspection and you're pushing, you're helping the appraisal and you're working with the um, loan officers, and again, a lot of times loan, officer, loan officers are great, some will drop the ball and the realtor has to pick that up because it's proven, the data is there, that in a transaction, if the realtor does a great job, but the loan officer who w might have been picked by the actual um, buyer did a bad job, then they'll say the whole thing was, they'll say the whole transaction was a negative experience. So the realtors have to control as much as they can. So it's a lot to put on the realtor, but I'm not gonna, uh, again, I'm here to be honest up front, you can make a lot of money in real estate, and you should if you want to work the hours that we, we're going to work and do as good a job um, in promoting it. Um, so that's some of the good. The other some of the good is, like for me, I've done a lot of investment, so I'm, very, I'm a very experienced investment real estate uh, agent. So if you want to do investing and you want to invest in properties or apartments or strip centers, I can help you out with all that, unlike a lot of the other realtors. So, and that's just a little sidebar. But uh, in closing, I guess I just want to say that um, I know some realtors have a bad reputation. I'm taking it on, and I know others are, that I'm doing everything I can to raise that bar. And I generally care about people. I want the best for you, and I will always put what's best for you and your family above my commissions and do whatever it takes to get you the best deal that, set, that helps you and your family move forward in the best case scenario.